And uh, I started doing this uh, last week, uh, putting, uh, trying to remember to put uh, some of the Bible verses that we're going to be talking about through the sermon. Uh, I'll give you a heads up, so if you want to pull out your Bibles and, and read along when we get to that point, you can. Um, Hebrews uh, 13, 11 through 18 is what we're going to be uh, learning from today. Are we good? Good morning. Welcome to Mount Carmel Bible Church. I'm Pastor Richard, and uh, we have a lovely message for us today. Another thing I'm doing a little different uh, today is I'm telling you exactly what the sermon's about right up front. It's about a love and sacrifice. Now today, in today's society, we think of love, we think of what's in it for me. Um, when we say I love you, we mean I love what you're doing for me. I love what you're getting to me. I love the way you look and how you make me feel. It's all about me. When you look at the young people nowadays, they say they're in love. That's what they mean. In the Bible, it's different. When they talk about love, they talk about what they do for others. If they love somebody, they go out of their way to put that person first in their life. When Jesus says he loves you, he showed you he loved you by giving up a lot of things for you. It's sacrifice. Love and sacrifice go hand in hand. In uh, the New Testament, uh, most of it was written in Greek, and the Greeks have several words for love, and most of the time what they use is agape, which is exactly what we're talking about. The kind of love that's important, it's pure, it shows the person you love them, shows your love. It shows by your sacrifice, by your actions, not just by your words. We all know about sacrifice in love. We all do. We all have children that come first, and we're all willing to sacrifice for them. We give up our Saturday nights, going out to spend it taking them to ball practice or uh, we sacrifice the new uh, honey rifle we want to get because the kids need uh, new clothes. We put them first. We sacrifice for them. And as parents, we don't really even think of it as a sacrifice. We just do it. And you know, my parents sacrificed a whole lot for my family. They were running us around to ball games and practices and uh, just constantly running around, giving up their nights, giving up their weekends for us. So we know what sacrifice is. Sacrifice for your partner, your spouse, is also there when we stop thinking of ourselves and put the, our, the needs of our spouse ahead of ours. We do what they want to do. We go, uh, men, are you with me? What do you want to eat for dinner? We always ask that to, the, to our wives. And we always get the same answer. I don't care, it's up to you. And we know that's a trap. <laughs> we know that's a trap. So we have to continue to play the game. We know that we know what's coming. We're going to go wherever they want to go. We'll, we'll make a suggestion. Let's say, nah. So you don't care, but then you keep saying, oh, all right, what about this place? No. What about this place? No. What about this place? No. They have something in mind. We have to get there. We have to figure that out. It's a game we play. But there's a lot of times I don't want chicken wings. <laughs> but we get chicken wings you know it happens we make sacrifices we go to restaurants we don't want to go to we see movies we don't want to see we watch TV shows that we don't want to watch we make sacrifices they may be small but they're sacrifices 
We sacrifice for each other. We sacrifice for our spouses. We, we sacrifice for our children. We know what that is. But what do we sacrifice for God? What do we do in our lives to put him first? We go to church on Sunday mornings. Yeah, we sacrifice by getting up in the morning and driving in. Some of us, the sacrifice is a little bit longer of a drive than others. But it's a small sacrifice. How much time throughout the week do we sacrifice for God? Do we say, you know what, I'm going to stop what I'm doing now, and I'm going to start reading the Bible a little bit. Am I going to sacrifice some time for him? Am I going to sacrifice a little bit of trouble to help out a ministry or to help out a neighbor? Am I going to see a car pulled over to the side of the road that are trying to change a tire? Am I going to sacrifice a little bit of my time to help them out? The Lord wants us to. He said to treat our neighbors, to love our neighbors, and treat them like we would ourselves. Do we do that? And do we do that enough? Sacrificing to show our love for God is important. In Hebrews, Paul writes, uh, for the body of those animals whose blood was Bought, uh, brought onto the holy place by the high priests as a sacrifice for sin are burned outside the camp. So Jesus also suffered outside the gates in order to sacrifice for the people through his own blood. Therefore, let us go to him outside the camp and bear the reproach he endured. I'll stop there for just a second. What he's, what he's suggesting there is Jesus went outside of the church to sacrifice himself. Maybe we should go outside the church and sacrifice for him as well. And it goes on. For here we have no lasting city, but we seek the city that is to come. Through him, then, let us continually offer up sacrifice to pray of praise to God. That is, the fruit of lips that acknowledge his name. Do not neglect to do good and to share what you have, for such sacrifices are pleasing to God. Obey your leaders. And submit to them, for they are keeping watch over your souls, as those who will have to give an account. Let them do this with joy and not with groaning, for what would be of, a, of no advantage to you? Pray for us, as we are sure that we have a clear conscience, desiring to act honorably in all things. He's saying, go out and sacrifice for the Lord. It's pretty clear. We sacrifice by coming in here in the morning. Uh, I've seen Larry sacrifice a lot of his time working around the church, getting things done, working behind the scenes. He did so much work for the ice cream uh thing. He, he deserves a little break. <laughs> uh, we've got other people that are making sacrifices all the time, too. I've seen Leroy out there with people getting estimates for removal of the trees. And it gets harder and harder to do those sacrifices with all the things that goes on in your life. We all know Jennifer does a lot of sacrifices for the ministry. We know that Barbara does a lot of sacrifices for the ministry. We know that Jen does a lot of sacrifices. We know that people sacrifice in here. And that's a good thing. That's an honorable thing. That is what Paul is writing about. 
we need to sacrifice a little bit to show God that we love him. We should be doing that. And joyfully. Joyfully sacrifice. Because remember, all the things God has done for us, we're put in a position where we can help others. So we should. The Lord has given us enough to take care of us, to take care of our families. He's given us extra so we can help others the way he wants us to, the way he tells us we're supposed to. And I, I forgot to mention, Bonnie does a lot of stuff with the schools as well. We all sacrifice. We all make sacrifices in our life. We sacrifice for our children. We sacrifice for each other. We should also remember that when we sacrifice for the Lord. The last part, talking about obeying your leaders. That's not talking about whoever's in the White House or Congress. It's whoever you feel is a spiritual leader in your life, whether it's me, which is questionable, whether it's the elders, which is honorable, whoever in your life is, a, is, a, is leading you in a spiritual way. Some, some of us have uh, online pastors that we listen to. Some of us have um, authors that we read and listen to. If they're leading you in, a, in some way, pray for them to continue to guide us and others. And pray to God to thank him for that person, the person in your life. Now, as a, as a pastor, I, I, I remind you all to do your due diligence. I am a person just like anyone else. If I start to stray from the what, from the message, from the word, it's up to each and every one of you to say, hey, wait a minute. I don't think you got that right. It's up to the elders. It's their responsibility to make sure who's speaking up here is speaking the true and honest word of the Lord. Because so many other churches we've even mentioned today, other churches are going the wrong direction. They're pushing people out because of the way they dress or because they do something that we don't approve of or if they have tattoos or if they work in a different area or if they have hygiene issues. They push these people away. That is not what we should be doing. If it is, show me in the Bible where it says that. I don't think I missed it, because I don't think it's there. We're to sacrifice for everyone. And pray for our leaders, and pray for each and every one of us. A church is a gathering of people who want to know the word of the Lord, who want to thank him for all that he's done for us. We need to encourage each other, pray for each other, help each other, strengthen each other. Because if we're not doing that, eventually we'll see what happens. That's where those other churches are. They're not strengthening each other. They're not holding each other accountable. They're not lifting each other up. They're following blindly their leadership and their leaders are being pulled away by the sinful world. Love and sacrifice. Jesus taught us love. He sacrificed for us. First, he died for us. We all know that. He died for our sins. He died to end the old covenant and bring in the new covenant. He gave us the gift of being able to speak to God ourselves directly. He opened up so that the Spirit, the Holy Spirit can come inside us and help guide us and strengthen us. 
He made it so we didn't have to slaughter animals to cover our sins. He took our sins away. We all know that part. And it's all in our hearts. But his sacrifice was more than just that. It was more than just getting nailed to the cross and being tortured. He was betrayed. He was betrayed by the people he loved. He suffered in ways that we can't even imagine. He was with God. He was with God. And he came down from his position to become a person. To be tested in the desert. To be hungry. To be beaten. To be betrayed. To suffer loss. He could have stayed in heaven with God. But he sacrificed himself by coming here. Just coming here is a huge sacrifice that we won't know how much of a sacrifice that is until we go home and experience what heaven is really like. He left that behind for us. So what do we do to thank him? What do we do to thank him? We come to church. We hear his word. But do we sacrifice? Do we sacrifice time? Do we sacrifice money? Do we sacrifice something we need to ask ourselves. How much do we sacrifice? Can I go to a vacation this year or should I go work at the mission? Can I go buy a new fishing pole or should I give some money to the food bank? Should I spend my day Drinking tea on the back porch, looking at this beautiful sunset? Or should I maybe go help my neighbor do some work on his property? There are many things we can do. And I'm not going to tell you that you need to do this. <clears throat> That's something you need to decide for yourself. We should think about sacrifice. Because we all know when someone sacrifices something for us, we can appreciate that a little more. Jen sacrificed a lot of time helping us move to our new home. And that was a huge deal for us. And she is always in our hearts. And she doesn't even understand how much that meant to us. Yeah, because after we got the, the bikes up there, we thought we were done for the day, and then here come the box truck. <laughs> yeah, that was well, that was intense. I don't think we and could ever things, repay her the way she helped us do and everything. Things, right, and things continue. She sacrificed a lot for us, and at the time, she didn't know us that well. Her and I got to know each other for a while working at the master's closet, but... She's family, and we'll do whatever we can for her. Because she sacrificed for us, we will definitely sacrifice for her. You all sacrifice your time for this church. And that's why we're all here. You all sacrifice little financial do donations when you can to keep this church going. And that's why we're here. The people that are buried in the cemetery, a lot of them donated time, energy, and financial contributions to this church, and that's why we're here. It all shows the Lord a little bit of gratitude for what he's done for us. So as we go out through the week, I want you to start thinking a little bit more about sacrifice.
sacrifice and love. The things that we do, sometimes it's hard for us to get up out of bed in the morning. Sometimes it's hard to get our achy bones into the church or to help someone. Those are sacrifices we make. We all have things that we need to think about and pray about. Think about sacrificing more of yourself as the Lord sacrificed for us. Showing him gratitude, showing him how much he means to us and how much his sacrifice affected who we are today. Is it always important? Let's go to the Lord in prayer. Dear Lord, thank you for all the sacrifices you've made for us. Thank you for guiding us and strengthening us and helping us to be the people we are today. Help us continue to show your love and show your mercy and show your compassion to others. Giving us more opportunity to do that and more openness to do that. We love you, Lord. We thank you for all you've given us. In Jesus' name.